Hello. So in this video, um, we're going to start kind of our more formal introduction to Fourier series, um, especially looking at certain properties of these series um, and just in general mathematically, right, how we deal with the kinds of trig series that we're using to um, construct solutions to certain PDEs. Okay. Um, okay. Right. So recall, well, Right, in the last um, chapter, the way that we constructed solutions to, especially the heat equation, um, was by considering certain series of this form, right? Where really what we're looking at is, right? So this piece we called a cosine series, right? Well, cosine of, so when n is equal to zero, cosine of zero is equal to one. So we also get a constant function. Right, but we were looking at decompositions of um, a function into a sum of cosines and a sum of sines, right? And so in practice, how these arose was, well, f of x, that was some initial condition, okay? And through separation of variables, we see that the solution is gonna have a trig piece. Um, and then each of these trig pieces is gonna be multiplied by something like e to the minus k lambda t. Okay, but for here, we're just going to focus on right these series, properties of them, etc. Okay, and so in general, if you have an infinite sum of cosine and sine terms um, that are built in this way, we'll call that a Fourier series. Okay, um, and usually the interval that we care about is going to be so either zero to L sometimes, um, but most of the time, we're actually going to focus on intervals of the form negative L to L, right? So the interval that we care about or that our function is defined over, that interval is gonna be symmetric about X equals zero, okay? Okay, um, right. And so the main question that um, kind of we'll start with is, well, what kinds of functions can we write as Fourier series, okay? Um, and so, in practice, the functions that we'll focus on are going to um, really be one kind. We're going to focus on piecewise smooth functions. Okay? Um, and so in this kind of introductory bit, we'll introduce kind of what it means to be piecewise smooth. We'll see some examples, et cetera. Um, but the key thing about piecewise smooth functions is that they may be discontinuous, but the only kinds of discontinuities that are allowed are jump discontinuities. Okay. So in the rest of this um, kind of video, we'll talk about right, what it means to be piecewise smooth and what jump discontinuities look like and how we make sense of them. Okay. Um, but in general, the functions that kind of we'll use as initial conditions, you might say, are going to be piecewise smooth functions. And for these functions, we can write them um, via this decomposition. Okay. Okay, so what is a piecewise smooth function? Um, a uh, piecewise smooth function is going to be any function so that we can break it up into pieces so that for each of the pieces, the function is continuous. Um, and we also want its derivative to be continuous. Okay. So one example of a piecewise smooth um, function might be something like, right, so let me change this. So if this is zero, x equals L, and then x equals minus L. One example of a piecewise smooth function might look like that, and then something like that, right? And so here, the, oh, the intervals on which the function is continuous are going to be this interval and then this interval, okay? And then on each of those intervals, the function's derivative is also continuous, okay? Um, but generally we're interested in breaking up a function into kind of pieces where it's nice, okay? And as long as we can break it up into finitely many pieces, we're happy. Um, so another example 
might be the following. So x equals minus L, zero, x equals L. And we're gonna consider a function that looks like this. And so this function we can write explicitly. This is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Okay. So certainly this function is continuous. Okay. Um, but the issue is, is that this function's derivative is not continuous at x equals zero, right? For negative x, the derivative is negative one. For positive x, the derivative is one, okay? So the function's derivative is going to be discontinuous at x equals zero. Okay. But what we can do is we can break up the interval into kind of right, x from negative l to zero, and then x from zero to l, so that on each of these intervals, the function is continuous, and then um, the function's derivative is continuous as well. Okay, and we'll see a few more examples here in a bit. Um, okay, um, right. And so then the other piece kind of that we mentioned is being, you might say intrinsic to the kinds of functions that we're interested in are going to be jump discontinuities, okay? right? And so, well, what is a jump discontinuity? Um, if you have a function, okay, we say that as a jump discontinuity, at a point, say x naught, if when you take the left and right limits, those limits disagree, okay? Um, each of those limits are gonna be finite, they're gonna be well-defined limits, but the limits won't agree, okay? So one example, right? So say this is x naught. So one example of a um, function that has a jump discontinuity might be the following. So actually, let me something like that, where this is maybe value one, and then up here, value of two, something like that, okay? So this function has a jump discontinuity at x naught, and we can write explicitly what this function is. This function is f of x is equal to, one for x strictly less than x naught, and it's equal to two for x greater than or equal to x naught, okay? And so we can say, okay, well, um, right? Intuitively, we'd say, well, yes, there's a jump right there, okay? But how do we match it with this definition? Well, let's look at what the limit is as x approaches x naught from below, right? So all along here, the value of f of x is equal to one. And so in particular, the limit, as you get to this point x naught, that limit is equal to one, okay? And so note here that this limit, as we go to x naught from below, the limit of the function is not equal to the function value, okay? Because in this picture, we're saying, well, the function value at x naught is equal to two. But the limit, right, along here, that limit is equal to one. Likewise, the limit up here is uh, as, so the limit as x goes to x naught from above, the limit of f of x is equal to two. So in this case, so let me write it out. So the limit, as x goes to x naught from above of f of x, this is equal to two. The limit down here, limit as x goes to x naught from below of f of x is equal to one. And these limits are not the same. Okay. So sure, this function has a jump discontinuity, but everywhere else, right, it's a pretty decent function. Okay. Um, okay. And so here's an example of a, uh, a function that's not going to be piecewise smooth um, for a pretty fundamental reason. Okay. And so before we talk about the, well, okay, so let's sketch this. 
right? Um, there's our axes, x equals zero. Um, x to the one third should be something like, so this function should look something like this. Right, because the graph of x cubed looks something like this, and so we're just reflecting it about reflecting the function about the line x equals y. Okay. Um, okay, and so before we talk about this, right? So going back to this example from before here, right? The issue here was that the function's derivative was not continuous at x equals zero. Right, but our workaround was we said, well, let's take intervals on either side of x equals zero and just work with that. Okay, and so that turned out to be fine because, um, right, the limit as you approach this bad point of the derivative, the limit was negative one on this side and one on this side, so the limits were fine, right, finite, well behaved, good to go. Well, let's see what's going to happen here. Um, okay, so certainly. Right on this entire interval, f of x is continuous. Right, there are no bad points, there are no jump discontinuities. It's all good to go. So then the question is, well, what could go wrong? Let's take a look at the derivative. Okay, so derivative of f. Bring the power down, subtract one. So we're going to have one third x to the one third minus one. And this is going to be minus two thirds, which we'll write as one over three x to the two thirds. Okay. And so, even though this, uh, even though this function is continuous, if we look at the derivative, okay, uh, the derivative as you go to x equals zero, this derivative is going to go to um, infinity, right? So the limit, oh, limit as x goes to zero of f prime of x, this is going to be positive infinity from either direction, okay? Right, so x equals zero is an issue for the derivative. So you might say, well, what if we do the same trick? What if we split um, kind of the interval of definition up into right the negative piece and the positive piece, and just look at what's happening to the function on each, each side. So in particular, we're saying, well, what if we cut it up here and here? These are our two intervals. And so on each interval, right, the function is well behaved, it's continuous. And if you look at the derivative, well, if you look away from zero, so if you look over here, the derivative is fine, right? But as soon as you start getting close to this bad point, right, the limit of this derivative is going to go to infinity. And so even though we can break it up so that kind of, right, we're getting away from that bad point, we still need the limits to be well behaved. And in this case, there's no way of, right, breaking up this domain of definition so that the derivative is well behaved. Okay. So in this in this way, right, and right, the book discusses this a bit, but in this way, we say that, well, this function is not piecewise smooth, okay? Because there's no way to kind of get around the bad behavior of its derivative near, oh, near the origin. <clears throat> okay. Um, cool. Great. So, um, right, as the slide says, so most of the kind of piecewise smooth functions that we'll work with are going to be periodic functions, right? And so, right, in particular, trig functions, they're periodic. Um, we're looking to decompose, you know, other functions in terms of trig functions. And so, a priori, we're, we're going to get something periodic out of it, okay? Um, and so certainly the functions that we try to decompose, right, so let me write it like this. So this is zero, this is 2L, you know, okay. So, um, 
certainly the functions that we're trying to decompose might have jump discontinuities. Okay. Um, but what also may happen, right? So if we want kind of this function right here to be periodic, one way to get this sort of periodic extension is to copy, um, I'll do this, let's try it like this. Copy that template, template of the function over. Okay. And so now we have a um, 2L periodic function, and this is something that we'll talk about uh, later on. Okay. But already we can see, well, here there are two kind of jump discontinuities that appear in this function, right? One jump discontinuity is right here, right? Because the left and right limits don't agree. Another jump discontinuity is gonna be right here. Because again, the left and right limits don't agree. Um, right, but what's interesting is in a sense, right? These jump discontinuities are arising in different ways, right? So this jump discontinuity arose from the definition of the function, right? We define the function over here and in this domain of that is defined over, right? There's this jump right here, okay? Um, but if we're looking for this sort of this periodic extension and we take this function profile and copy it over, right? The value of the function at L or that left limit does not match up with the value of the function at negative L. And so because of that, we're gonna get a jump discontinuity here. Um, and of course, since we're copying this function over, right? We want it to be periodic. We're gonna get another jump discontinuity here, another one here, and so on. Okay. So we'll talk a little more about, you know, what these um, kind of periodic extensions look like and things like this. Um, but in general, right, the functions that we'll be working with from here on out, they're gonna be piecewise smooth. And so in particular, they may have jump discontinuities, but that's not gonna give us any issue. We, uh, those kinds of discontinuities are gonna work well within the framework we have um, set up. 